Here's the trigonometric form we just discovered with you by introducing the geometrical angle of, I mean, by looking at the complex numbers from a geometrical point of view, where R is often a symbol which, you used, which is used to abbreviate the, it's a symbol which often used to abbreviate the modulus of the complex number. So every time you write a complex number in this form, this is called the trigonometric form, and the beauty of the trigonometric form is actually concealed by the, well, it's not concealed, but it's, it, it, can, uh, it is contained in the fact how it, uh, it contained in the fact uh, how you multiply complex numbers when they are given in trigonometric form. And here they are, look at this. If you have two complex numbers given in trigonometric form, here they are, two of them. So Q here is the modulus of the second number, W. What was discovered, and that was discovered a long time ago, of course, if you have the two numbers in this form, and if you try to multiply them, if you try to multiply them, what will happen is this. You can, of course, multiply them the way we multiply numbers in Cartesian form, right? You can write this bracket next to this bracket and do the full expansion, and then combine everything you see together and try to, re try to figure out if you can simplify that. If you do that, you will succeed with this but I'm not going to do it right now in front of you. If you do this multiplication, the way we multiply numbers as a Carti in Cartesian form, what you come up with is the expression like this. If you come, after, after you do all of these expansions, if you expand this bracket times this bracket, and you combine all of the terms which correspond to the real part, all of the terms which correspond to the imaginary part, and if you use one of the identities for the trigonometric functions from the elementary trigonometry, you will realize that the real part will be like this and the imaginary part will be like this. And that's the beauty of the trigonometric form, which was discovered by, uh, by Euler. It's one of the mathematicians. He discovered that if you multiply the complex numbers in trigonometric form, you have this beautiful property. You don't have to do any multiplication at all. You just have to combine the moduli, and you have to add the arguments. Similar trick, even th this will be a longer just longer justification. So properly, I should I should put here, I should put here, let me just put it like this. I should put here dots, because I'm concealing some steps from you, but these are the elementary steps of the multi uh, algebraic multiplication of complex numbers, and I hope you can recover those steps. If you do the quotient of two complex numbers, again, subject to this technical or tedious computations, which again I concealed by these dots, the result of the DV of this uh, quotient will be the quotient of moduli and the arguments, you have to subtract them. This behavior of the complex numbers in trigonometric form, it is suggested, suggested that actually this expression can be treated as the complex exponential, like this. Because we know from the normal exponentials, from the real exponentials, that when you multiply them, it's the same as when you add the exponents in those exponentials. You cannot prove this identity. Don't be uh, fooled by, by, by the obvious sort of very simple proofs you may find on the internet or in your books. You can't prove this. It's just the ingenuity of this gentleman. I guess I should make it really large because it's a big ingenuity of this gentleman who by looking at these observations, which you can establish, which you can prove, made this discovery that this can be naturally taken as a definition for the complex exponential. So this is in fact, you see this colon here? This is the symbol which represents definition. It's not a proof. You can't prove this. And then and that's how the, actually the exponential form of the complex numbers comes, comes about, because now you can abbreviate everything I wrote here with the exponential forms like this. This will be the exponential form for the z number. This will be the exponential form for the w number. And now when you multiply them in exponential forms, it is simply the product of moduli and sum of the arguments. When you quotient them, it will be the quotient of moduli and difference of the arguments. 
if you raise your complex number to the power n, it's just a repetitive, repetitive application of this property or in exponential form something like this. That's how it will be when you raise a complex number to the power n. That's all you have to know about the exponential and trigonometric forms is that the, this observation that the, when you multiply the two numbers in, comp in trigonometric form, it gives you this beautiful behavior and that inspires the definition of the exponentials. Yet there are some like a further results which, is which I attach to the trigonometric forms or exponential forms, and you also should know them, sh should know them, sorry. One of them called the Dimoivre theorem, which is basically identity like this, where you drop the moduli. So if you just assume that your R is one and you write left-hand side equal to the right-hand side, that will be something which is called the Dimoivre theorem. So left-hand side here, oh, I'm sorry. I said the wrong, I mean, I pointed at the wrong places. I, this left-hand side is this left-hand side, and this right-hand side is this right-hand side. Because what I said before, it contradicts to my claim that you cannot prove this, right? If you, if you call something a theorem, you assume there is a proof for that. There is a proof for that, but it's not a proof for this, of this identity. It's a proof of this identity, which is something which can be proved, of course, like this. It will be repetitive application of these steps. Now, what else I have here? Well, that's a useful result, which can be, uh, you will find this useful for a few questions in, in the yellow book. Now, the other formula which are also useful, it's the reversal of this definition, where you express the cos in terms of the exponentials, and I, sometimes I call them the converse Euler formulae. Basically, it, just, it gives you the expression for the cost in terms of the exponentials like this, and the expression for the sine in terms of the exponentials like this. Now, the last bit which I have to mention, which, which I'd like to mention right now, is that what happens when you equate two exponentials? If you equate two exponentials like this, you cannot immediately you cannot immediately conclude that alpha equal beta. It's a wrong conclusion. Don't try to do that. But you can conclude that alpha equal beta modular 2 pi. And the explanation for this modular 2 pi is this. It means that the difference of alpha and beta is a multiple of 2 pi for some integral factor n. 